for the tube. Say what up, tube. What up, tube? What up, up, tube? tube? All right, and last but certainly not least, <clears throat> for the pod. In three, in three, two, and one. Welcome to another episode of Business Bros. <laughs> What up, ladies and gentlemen? Happy Monday. Hernan Cias <laughs> Happy here. Happy Monday. Host of the Business Bros Podcast, along with my co-host. The insurance bro, James Cias. And as always, we have a fun-filled show for you. But first... But first... Are you going to do the question? No, no, I'll do the question after do the, the question intro. Do the question after the intro. Oh, I thought you were going to do the... Wait. I thought you were going to do the question before the intro. Whatever. All right, here we go. <laughs> Disclaimer. Stuff. Yeah, new format stuff. Sorry, everybody. You're joining in on this. <clears throat> Part of the fun. Yep. Disclaimer, the views expressed on today's episode of the Business Bros Pod are not reflective of the thoughts or opinions of the Business Bros. Unless one of the Business Bros said it, then we have no defense. <laughs> but we're supposed to say something like that when we, when we enter the world of politics, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless of what you believe, today's guest is more than meets the eye. Not only is our guest an SDSU alum, he is also a certified financial planner, certified employees benefits specialist, business owner, shout out to School Solar, yep. and with your help, the next congressman for the 53rd district. Joining us today from the campaign trail, please welcome to the show. Future Congressman Fernando Garcia. What's up, everybody? Thank Woo. you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, Thanks for coming so on the much. show. What thank do you think you. of the intro? You think oh, I that think one. it was awesome. Yeah. You're like, that's wait, the best I, one I've ever got. Did I do all that stuff? Is that really all? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Of, that's a great resume. I'm always, I'm always like surprised when I when I hear him do the intro yeah. and I kind of, I kind of watch the guests. Yeah. And they're like, wow. I did. Oh. Wait, that wasn't. I know. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, okay. I, oh, yeah. You need to come hang out with me. I would just bring you along everywhere. Right? You yeah, need to I got introduce you. me to everybody. That's it. That's it. That's how he walks in the room yes, from now on. From now that's on. it. That's yep. it. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Buffer ain't got yes, nothing on me. That's right. All right, I got, I got two questions for you. One real sure. quick, and then and then we'll do the uh, the promo. So, what do you think, or what what is your overarching long term goal that you're looking for right now, right off the top of your head? Um, well, in terms of the uh, Congress side with my campaign, I'm, you know, I'm running as an independent, and that to me is important because I feel like a big part of the problems that we have is the two-party system. Mm -hmm. And so trying to break that monopoly up is really my, my biggest challenge and understand and trying to explain that to people. So really what I'm trying to start is, a, is not just a campaign for myself, but a campaign for other independents, people who are you know, outside the box thinkers, people who don't want to mm -hmm. be married to one party or the other. And hopefully, with my success, they see an opportunity for them to take the same chances and uh, move this country forward. I like the sound of that. All yeah. right. I want you to think of something that's preventing you. There's something that you're struggling with individually that's preventing you from achieving that. We'll come back to that. While you think of that okay. question, I'm going to remind our studio audience, I want to say thank you to you guys. 2019, we had a goal of 365 pairs of shoes to uh to collect and give out to the homeless and you guys helped us meet and exceed that. Awesome. So thank you to all those listeners out there for being the contributing factor. 29 or 2020 we're thinking of another type of project very similar in scope but probably bigger since uh since you guys helped us out we can we can do better. I'm sure we can. Oh yeah. <clears throat> but thank you guys for all that. James is also running an insurance agency. So if you guys need help with your commercial, auto, workers comp, general liability, whatever type of insurance you need, he's there to give you a, a hand. We're also there to help increase your bottom line. Maybe you own a tax office or a mortgage office. You want to add insurance into your business. We'll do all the heavy lifting for you. We even keep you RESPA compliant for all you real uh, mortgage professionals out there. But you got to call us to figure out how. 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. Show sponsor for today is dronequote.net. Make solar shopping easy. Go to dronequote.net forward slash business bros. That's the starting point. They're going to come out, send a drone, measure your rooftop <clears throat> so nobody has to step on your roof. Send the estimates to roofing companies, send the estimates to solar companies. You sit back and look, pick from all the different uh, real, uh, real estate companies, pick from all the different uh, solar companies and choose the quote that works best for you. Dronecode.net forward slash business bros. Man, I feel like I've been on break for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. All right, Fernando. So what do you think is that, that thing that's stopping you? What's that limiting belief? Your goal is to get to mm. win Congress, but not only win your seat at Congress, mm. but kind of shape the way things are going mm -hmm. as far as how people feel about politics. Yeah, so the biggest challenge <laughs> for an independent candidate is really you have no structure that you can kind of step into. So, um, for example, if you're a Democrat or Republican or from any of the other parties, there's usually 
a structure that you can step into and there's going to be people that are going to help you along the way. Whereas when you're an independent, you're kind of starting off from scratch. Mm -hmm. So, you know, think of it as if you're the first to go to college in your family, you're kind of just learning on the job. You're kind of, there's nobody kind of holding your hand. Um, so that's the hardest part is being an independent, um, initially, but also sometimes I think explaining to people how an independent has an opportunity to win, um, and, and really just explain to them the value that independent candidates have. And really that value is, Hey, we're not married to any kind of ideology. Um, we can look at a, a situation and logically say, Hey, I think this is the best way to approach it. As opposed to what I think is what's going on is you have two parties who are going so far to the right, so far to the left, and they're kind of more bickering at each other as opposed to solving problems. And oh, hundred so, percent. And I think people feel that, but they don't know how to cure that. And what I'm trying to say, hey, look, there's a cure for that. The cure is to start voting independent, looking at alternatives, rather than just going, oh, what did what did my mom or dad raise me to vote for? You know, because that's kind of what we fall into. Most people vote for the party of whoever their parents kind of voted yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they inherit the team, That's right? right? They yep. inherit the team. Yep. Well, let's talk a little bit about your background. Like, what, mm -hmm. you know, prior to this whole politics, you, you've had a background of being in business, being around, talking to a lot of different people, mm -hmm. helping shape their lives. What was, yeah. what was your background? So, you know, I, can't, I uh, went to San Diego State, um, grew up in, LA, you know, in a suburb of L.A. called Walnut, uh, came to college, um, had a child at a young age, you know, I was 19, and uh, that, that was a big turning point in my life. You know, I had to kind of be responsible at a young age. And, um, but I w graduated on time and went into financial services for about 50, a little bit over 15 years and uh, learned a lot about, you know, the financial system, you know, learned about, you know, how, how money works, um, you know, started to look at different things outside of the stock market on how people can, um, you know, earn money and uh, different types of investments and, and just realize that, one of the best things that people can do is actually own their own energy source. And so that's where uh, I saw solar as a benefit to um, middle class people, working class people. It's going to help the environment. So I left that industry to start a small solar company called School Solar. And um, I primarily the reason it's called School Solar is because I, I work primarily with school employees. And uh, the reason I kind of pick a group, uh, one, I used to work on their retirement plans for a lot of school districts. So it was just a natural fit. Uh, for me to partner with unions and, and different districts and, um, you know, put all my marketing efforts towards one group of people. Um, and, and so just through that process, I learned about working with people, you know, solving problems, seeing what motivates people, um, you know, literally the whole sitting down with the kitchen table or across the desk one on one um, and just, you know, hearing people out what's important to them. And I just wanted to take that towards you know, our government and, um, you know, just find, find ways to help, uh, basically help the citizens. So you, you left the financial service sector, mm -hmm. built your own company, which is yeah. a whole huge undertaking. That's right. a huge risk to like embark upon, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you're, you're leaving a, the comfort of one thing to build something that you don't know is going to work right. right off the bat. Right. So walk me through that. Tell me, tell me sure. about what you were feeling like, at that time and, and how it ended up working out. So I, I kind of just got to a point in my career where it just wasn't motivating for me for what I was doing. I, I um, you know, I almost felt like a, you know, almost like a factory worker where I already knew the conversations I was going to have. I already knew the solutions. I already, um, and I just felt like I was more, there was more creative uh, creativity to me. And I wanted to kind of express that. And I wanted to test myself and, you know, starting your, your own business is a way to put your feet to the fire you know, mm -hmm. and seeing what you're about. And, uh, I had this idea in my mind and I said, you know what, I, I can't, I can't live the rest of my life, not putting this to the test and not at least at the very least trying, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, so I took that leap and I'm glad I did. It was probably one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you kind mm -hmm. of a personal question. Sure. Were you married at the time you married? No. no. So I'm engaged. Okay. So, Congratulations. Um, um, <laughs> thank you. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm, but I'm divorced. I have two children. Uh, it was a tough decision uh, to to go self-employed and start my company because uh, at that time, my son was a senior in, in high school uh, and was on his way to college. And mm. so uh, and he's now a junior at Berkeley. But uh, it was one of those things like, man, I'm going to forego this guaranteed income um, with the you know, I don't know how this business is 100 percent going to go. Am I going to be able to pay tuition? Am I going to be able to do this and that? But I just felt deep down in my heart that this is what I had to do, you know. 
Um, and, and, you know, there's never going to be a perfect moment. Um, so I just had to, you know, figure it out. Yeah, no, yeah. 100%. I mean, at yeah. least at least it came up in your mind that you wanted, it, it sounds like anyways, you wanted control over what your future was going to have. Absolutely. You wanted to be, yep. you wanted to have a place where you can exploit that creativity that's going on in your mind where mm-hmm. you didn't absolutely know the answer, but you knew that you were willing to figure it out. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I don't think anybody <clears throat> ever really knows what the answer is is before they're going in uh you just kind of figure it out and you know as long as you have the right kind of mindset you know and and your objective is to help people you know then um you know i think you're you're gonna you're gonna succeed so so what was the plan after that okay so the plan was i'm gonna i'm gonna build this solar company Mm -hmm. and it's gonna be the best thing in the world (laughs) and uh it's gonna be my new security my new Mm -hmm. everything um how did how did pan out how did that plan work out it worked out great i mean um i I, it started off slow to be honest with you um but then actually right around the second year so i've been on um my company's been around for about three years now and right year and a half to about two years is really when it started to take off so it took about a year and a half of just scraping by and then um and then i just hit a stride um i work with uh so my company is what's called an approved vendor uh for a major union and, um, you know, they started doing more marketing for me and, and all, it was like all my seeds that I had planted started to grow mm-hmm. and, and it all, they started to grow right at around the same time. And so it put me in a position financially where I can go and run for Congress, which is something that I've been, um, looking to do. And, uh, I just said, Hey, now's the time I looked at my district, uh, where I live and, uh, I saw an opportunity, especially for an independent candidate um, to, to win in the primaries. And so I, I just took that chance. All right. I want to, I want to know some emotion here because, because so, sure. starting a business, especially within the first five years is, is a huge undertaking mm-hmm. and you have, you have children, you have, yeah. I'm sure you were dating at the time yep. since your recent fiance. Right. Yeah, yep. Um, and, and things finally, after a year and a half of scraping by after a year and a half of, you know, probably looking at the people you love most and telling them, telling them like, it's, it's going to work out. Right. It's going to work out. Like you're trying yeah. to sell them as much as well, you're, you're trying to sell yourself on this opportunity that you're working <laughs> right, on. Right? right. Well, you know, what helped me was, um, uh, back in when the recession hit back in like 2008, mm-hmm. that, that did affect me, um, personally, financially, uh, big time. And so I know what it is to already kind of, you know, you know, go into debt and, you know, um, you know, lose your job and, you know, have to struggle financially and then kind of bring yourself back up. And when you're in that moment, you're like, man, this, this really sucks. This and that. But once you pull, once you're able to pull yourself out of it, once you start to go, you know what, worst case scenario, if this happened to me again, let's say I did fail, I can pull myself back out. Yeah. You know? And so that fear the second time around wasn't as bad. And I just said, you know what I've learned from previous, I'm just going to put my foot to the pedal whatever comes my way, I'm just going to believe in it and I'm going to just figure it out. And, um, you know, that, that, that was, uh, that's what helped me out. I mean, obviously there's a lot of emo, there's still a lot of emotions because no matter what, when you're in business, you can, and you can never really predict exactly hundred percent what your income is going to be, how everything's going to play out. Um, but you can control how you feel about it, what your outlook is, um, you know, do your best to control your expenses and how you can make things, um, do things smarter, do things more efficiently. And, um, I think we just get tied down a lot by the emotional part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we don't want to be too emotional in in sense of if you're starting to feel scared or if you're, you know, you have that fear in you, um, you just have to bring that courage out and, um, just keep, you know, plugging forward. And you'd be surprised how many times, you know, things just pop up in your favor. If you take that approach, you know, um, I've had countless times where, you know, I just have deals pop in my, you know, come out of nowhere at the right moment mm-hmm. that uh, allowed me to continue. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's the universe speaking to me or me just uh, uh, kind of uh, the, that law of attraction of, of um, attracting business. But it's just worked out for me. Well, I think it's it's a combination of all of them, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you planted enough seeds that eventually they're going to bear fruit. And yeah. sometimes you're going to be walking around your garden and be like, I didn't know that tree was there, <laughs> right, right? right? And and, and now yeah. you have fruit that you didn't, yeah. you know, have before. Yeah. So your your business is doing well. Mm-hmm. Um, and was running for Congress like a thing that you wanted to do since you were a kid? You wanted to be in politics? Yeah. Yep. Is this yeah? Right? So so absolutely, I've always. Uh, enjoyed uh interested in politics my whole life um 
you know, I think for me, it's also just a matter of, uh, I have a deep love for our country and, uh, and, you know, deep, um, you know, appreciation for where we live, you know, um, and, and our freedoms. And so that, you know, we, as, as we kind of take some things for granted. And so we have to make sure that we don't take those things for granted. We need to protect our freedoms. We need to protect our liberties. And, um, you know, I just wanted to be a part of it, you know? Well, let me ask you, cause, cause I mean, you could have done this while you had your job. You could have, mm-hmm. you could have ran for Congress earlier in life. What, what was the thing that you saw? Like, what, was there something that triggered you that, that you were just on a normal day, maybe one day and you just seen something you're like, now's the time. This is the time that I'm going to make a change. Well, I, I think one of the things I, I wanted to do first was start my business first so I can have the freedom to do something like this. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes when you're a, an employee, um, you, you feel kind of restricted. And, and plus I wanted to show and prove to myself and other people that, Hey, I can build something. I can create something out of, out of nothing really. And, um, and, and, and that way I have an example to show if I'm going to, if I'm going to run for something, and say, hey, I can do this, then I need to show them an example of something I've already done. Mm-hmm. And, you know, building my company was a, was a part of that. And so, you know, I, I just wanted to have that example of, of building a company and that's it. That's yeah. that's not a bad example. That's a really good example. I yeah. mean, obviously, you know, election day isn't here yet. We mm-hmm. don't know what the outcome of that's going to be. But like who you had to become to be that candidate, yeah. like, it, it, yeah, you could have ran, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, mm-hmm. but do you think you were ready as no, an individual to take on the, no, the office? Not, a, not at all. Not at all. I mean, I think that being so, you know, going and starting my own company is it, like you said, it's not, it's not just about what you get, but about who you become and who I've become, not just from starting my own company, but you know, just your life experiences, but um, just, just proving to yourself uh, the things that you can do. And then once you get to a point um, of being able to do that, uh, it just gave me the, the confidence and, and plus the, just that knowledge. I mean, politics and issues are things I've been studying for, you know, 15, 20 years. And so, uh, you just get to a point to where you feel like your knowledge base is good enough to, you know, answer questions and, and give, uh, an honest response to the problems that we face. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, honesty in politics. That's so funny that, you know, like, <laughs> well, it, it should be just common sense to a lot of things, you know? Um, unfortunately we get very emotional and we get tied to one, um, ideology. And, and like I said, I think the biggest problem we have is that you don't have middle of the road people who just want to logically look at issues and say, Hey, you know, I, I like your idea. Let's go with your idea. Instead it's, Oh no, it's mine. And you know, I got to, I got to hold, Dibs. I got, I got to, I got to, you know, dig in my heels and I'm not going to move. And so I, I just think we need more people in the, in the center, more people who aren't going to be tied to their ideology. And, and, and I think we can move that country forward. You know, something that, that parallels in both business and politics is your ability to trust others to do certain things for mm-hmm. you. You know what I mean? Like to have that whether it's an employee, whether it's a partner, whether it's, you know, people that are working on your campaign, there's, there's that ability for you to trust that somebody else will complete a specific project you put in place or Mm -hmm. operate a system that you put in motion. Um, how, how prepared are you for, for expanding in that kind of, you know, mindset? (laughs) Oh, gives you time to answer the question. Okay. (laughs) The time is, 18 minutes and 31 seconds. We interrupt today's regularly scheduled number one podcast in San Diego for a purely selfish, completely irreverent, sell-out cash grab word from our sponsor. Hernan, what are we selling today? Solar, ladies and gentlemen. We got a solar guy on the show. We had to go with solar promo. (laughs) Drumquote.net forward slash business bros. That's where you go to get the solar process started. There are plenty of people just like Fernando here who have solar companies, but you never know which one to shop for or how to get a hold of them. Drumquote.net forward slash business bros. You go there first, enter your information. They're going to get the quotes out to all the different solar companies, to all the different roofing companies, and you can sit back as a consumer, pick the quote that works best for you, Get it done. Solar is the best option. The sun's giving away free money and you're not taking advantage of it. Get solar panels on your rooftop. ASAP. Dronequote.net forward slash business bros. And now, back to that number one podcast in San Diego, the Business Bros Pod. All right. So, 
question was, you know, dealing with people, bringing mm-hmm. people on board, sure. uh, whether on the business side as an employee or whether as a, you know, in, in your campaign, like how, how, how prepared do you think you are for, for dealing with, you know, teams? Yeah, no, I, I think I'm very prepared. I've worked with teams, you know, my whole life. And I think the, the major thing is to find, you know, what's important to those people, you know, kind of, you know, what, what you want to look at their experiences, but you want to look inside of what motivates them, you know? Are they open to new ideas? Are they bringing new ideas? Um, or, or are they just, hey, I'm this way, I'm that way, and they don't budge? You know, I, I want to work with people who think outside the box. I want to work with people who will challenge what I say, um, but challenge it with facts, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, bring new ideas. So, and no policy and no um, legislation is going to be 100% perfect, but we want to, we can't focus on perfection. We, we really need to focus on progress. Mm-hmm. And so anything that can, can move us forward, you know, we definitely want to look at. That's, that's, you know, perfect is the enemy of done, right? right, right. I mean, granted in politics, we wish everything was perfect. And, mm-hmm. and, but, but I honestly believe, you know, where, where you talk about the two different parties and the emotions, I honestly feel that it doesn't matter which side you're talking about each of them feels like they're doing something in the best way that they think is possible to achieve a certain goal. Right. You know what I mean? Well, here's the problem really with the two party system is they're, they're kind of basically bought out by the same people. Yes. And so what you have is you really have the illusion of two parties. You really have one party. Um, and you know, the one thing about, um, if you look at most Americans, they they agree on a lot of issues, but, what they have is uh, there's an advantage to keeping us kind of divided. And so, um, and that, that, that just leaves basically the corporatists and the least, the elites um, are able to, they're basically the unions. Um, they use the Democrat and Republican parties as unions for the very rich. They go, uh, they do the bidding in terms of, you know, lowering taxes or taxes and, um, you know, for corporate welfare and, and different things. And so um, we need an alternative um, to kind of break that up because more and more people just want some more of a centralist idea, um, something that puts people first rather than corporations. You no, know, it's funny. I, I 100% agree with you yeah. on most people agree. So, I mean, I used to I used to watch a lot of different politics, mm-hmm. and then at some point I was like, I'm tired of all the negativity. Right. I need to cut this off, and I and I complete like I went yeah. cold turkey. I completely yeah. cut it off. Yeah. And the only uh, type of updates I get is through conversations with people. Right. And it's so amazing to hear people because when you actually talk to a person, mm-hmm. they're not what you get described as being the blue side or the red mm-hmm. side. Right. They're people with right. opinions. Yep. And, and oftentimes you agree with things. Right. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people feel like, for example, they might be Democrats, but they don't feel like they don't necessarily agree with socialists. And then you have a lot of Republicans who are like, Hey, I'm Republican, but I don't necessarily like Trump. And that's because most people are just normal people. They just want a government that works for them. And, uh, you know, they, yeah, like you said, when you talk to people, there's not a lot of hate between people. No. Even when I travel across the country, um, like my, I'm, you know, I'm divorced. So my younger son lives in Kansas City with my ex-wife. So I travel to the uh, Midwest a lot. And so when I'm out there, I get to see the different opinions and I see how people um, operate just in daily life. And, and really, they're no different. Um, from how we operate out here. I mean, we may, we may talk a little different. We may eat a little different food. We may have some different, uh, customs, but at the core, we're all the same. Oh yeah. Yeah. Kansas City needs some carne asada fries. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they got great barbecue though. So. They do get yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. You were about yeah. to go with that, huh? Yeah. I totally was. I was oh, like, yeah. they got the barbecue. The, yeah. You can't go wrong with barbecue. You yeah. know, and, but <clears throat> food is one of those things, right? Mm-hmm. Food is one of those things that brings people together and you can sit at the table and and disagree on some things but you're going to find that most people agree on most things mm-hmm. we all want the same type yeah. we want to be we want to feel secure we mm-hmm. want to know that we have a possible future yep. and that our kids are taken care of yeah. uh, you know aside from those couple things it's that it's it's I, I just feel like a lot of times on tv it's a lot of you know shield with mis mis con, uh, misinformation coming out mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you an example we got that prop 13 coming out mm-hmm. right the i mean it's going to be it's going to be on a bill here soon and they're going to mess with it mm-hmm. though any way they can but the way it's sold is like increased funding for schools right and it's right, like right. 
dude, like yeah. it's not actually that, <laughs> right. but politics that's, and I think that's yeah. where most politicians yeah. and things get such a negative connotation because yeah. of the, it's, it's the bait and switch. Nobody right. likes to be sold on things. We all want to buy, right. right? We all want to buy into this idea that you have. If you sell us on the merits of that idea, mm-hmm. we don't want to be sold, told we're doing one thing and then slap yeah. in the back and get another thing. Yeah. Or worse, you don't even tell us what's in here and it's yeah. 50 pages long or whatever. Yeah. And then inside of there is some little yeah, I, jurisdiction change or whatever. Yes. I hate, you know, and I, and I hate that. I hate when, uh, you know, politicians and political parties do that. Um, you know, and it's kind of interesting. One of the things I wish we kind of discussed more in politics was. That since we're on the court, the, the discussion of um, property tax is really the difference between a property tax system and a land value tax system. Um, uh, very few people ever talk about that. And basically the way that our property tax system works is you're taxed on the uh, on the value of your land and on the structure, uh, whether a home or, or whatever that's on it. And so it, let's just say, for example, the land is worth 200000 and your home is worth three hundred, So you pay property tax on a value of 500 right? And if you decide to improve your property, let's just say you had 100000 of value to it, now your taxes go up, right? That's our current tax system. Well, in a land value um, tax system, what we would do is we would tax the land, the value of the land, but not the building. And what that does is it, it doesn't um, disincentivize you from improving your properties, actually incentivize you for doing that, and actually penalizes more the person who doesn't do anything with their land. Mm-hmm. So, for example, when you have, um, you know, if you have a, uh, vacant land on um, you know in certain areas that person can just sit on it and typically vacant land are usually owned by wealthy people especially when you when you go to places where wealthy people own many acres of land they're just sitting on it and not doing anything it forces them to either build homes uh, build you know businesses or grow something on it and so one of the things I wish people talked more about is switching from more of a land value tax than a property tax system I think, that, correct me if I'm wrong, but if that's the case, mm-hmm. then um, doesn't, who has control over the value of the land at that point? The assessor's office? Still? Yeah. So yeah, it'd still be the assessor's office. And, and boy, here's the thing. If more people, the, the, the theory behind it is basically if more people improve the property, meaning like their business, their homes, that's going to naturally improve the value of the land. And so, um, and so you're going to have the, the, the taxes are going to go up because which is going to be good. You know, people's homes are better. There's more businesses. There's more there's more work because, you know, people you're going to have to hire people to improve those properties. And uh, it's just a better way of, um, of of taxing as opposed to you decide to improve your property. Your tax rate goes up. Mm-hmm. So. Um, well, that's one of those things why we like Prop 13. Right. It's going to stick the same from when I bought it. That's right. Don't have to right. mess with me. Right. Right. Stay away from me, state of California. Right. Don't touch my stuff. You're already raising the taxes on gas and yeah. everything else. I mean, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's just kind of the way it is. We it, it, There's a big argument against taxes, and I, and I understand mm-hmm. that argument, but there's a big... There's a reason why we drive mm-hmm. on nice freeways and Absolutely. the lights work, and when we flush the toilet, it mm-hmm. all goes down, right? Yeah, I, I think that... Um, you know, we definitely have to pay taxes. There's no, no, no way to go about it. But we also have to be smart about it. And really what we need to be smart about, too, is spending. Um, you know, for me, like one of the big things is like in, in higher education, um, nobody ever talks about, you know, the waste that goes in in higher education. What I mean by that is like I went, you know, I went to San Diego State for four years. Um, if I took, you know, you take two years of um, lower division, two years of higher division. And when I look at it, I go. There's two years of lower division. If Which I, is high I, school again? Pretty much, right? Yeah. And so here's what my thing is. Hey, look, if I got rid of one year of lower division, you're basically cutting the price of college by 25%. It was kind of a useless year anyways. Well, why don't we just, rather than have a four-year college, why not a three-year college? Mm-hmm. And that would, that's something that we can e- uh, easily do, and it would save, the, it would save money for the, for the student and make college easier to access and you know, why wouldn't we also be able to, if you have a student who's highly motivated in high school, you know, is, is pretty smart, give them the opportunity to take the, that next uh, lower division year in high school, basically, so that when they do graduate, they just have two years of college, you know? And so we can literally save, we, we can literally cut the price of college in half if we just cut the fat uh, and give, you know, people more opportunity. And we can do a lot of these classes online. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things we can do uh, that don't cost any money, 
you know, we can just bring, you know, we, what we need is better ideas mm -hmm. and um, not just money to, towards the issue. And this is where you're going to run into the roadblocks. Right. <laughs> this is where the lobbyists who are getting paid exactly. at the universities. Yep. Yep. This is where, this is why student loans are not bankruptable. This mm -hmm. is, you know, all the money yeah. that's flowing in mm -hmm. is going to be those big, huge conflicts that right. are going to stand in your way. Yep. Which, which is crazy when you think about the fact that I can run up a $50,000 credit card bill and default on it and claim bankruptcy. But if I run up $50,000 in student loan, it'll haunt you forever, it'll haunt me forever. And you know, that's one of the things I want to change is that you should be able to default on your, you know, it, it's not something that I recommend, but you know, if, if lenders are just going to freely give people money and um, you know, there, there needs to be a um, something in check um, so that one lenders just don't freely just overly lend and that, you know, students don't overly borrow. Uh, they need to, but if they do borrow and, and they can't get out there, there should be an option for them to free themselves from that debt. And yes, there would be a penalty for it, obviously by BK and it's not recommended, but it, it would at least free them from that debt and uh, allow them to move on and you know, this buy is, homes. This is something that's uh, near and dear to me. Yeah. I, I, it, it bugs me to no end. If I wanted yeah. to buy a home mm -hmm. for $150,000, because other parts of the country, you could right. do that, right? Um, I would have to go to the bank. I would have to show my financials. Mm -hmm. I'd have to have a low enough debt to income ratio to even, you know, start the whole process. Right. But to get a student loan, same all the way up to 150, you don't need, you sign a piece of paper right. that says you've passed this 15 minute <laughs> course on how to right. manage money right. at 18. Right. And, and they give it all to you. Yep. And they, and, and you can't get away from it and, and you can't run right. away from it. And that's why the lenders love it. You know, it's a non back, like no security right. backing collateral, yep. nothing, yep. nothing, yep. A, f a phantom piece of paper that you may or may not accomplish mm -hmm. that supposedly gets you an income. Right. But it doesn't actually do that. Right, you no. still have to go out and find the job. <laughs> right. It does nothing right. for you. Yep. yep. Oh, all so, right. so yeah, Sorry. you know, to me, you know, these are, <laughs> like I said, these are things that, uh, to me are common sense, mm -hmm. right? Like when you said like, perfectly, when you said that the two years of college is just like redoing high school again. I mean, that ex you put it better that you explained it better than I did, you know, and, um, you know, and it, and it just makes sense for us to come up with uh, common sense solutions. I 100 percent agree. I'm looking yeah. forward to keeping track on what you're doing. 53rd yeah. District, right? Yep. All right. Um, we're going to move into the ask the bro section. Okay. So I want you to think of a question, personal or business. You can ask me. You can ask James. I know he doesn't talk very much, but you can ask him anyways. So while you think of that question, mm -hmm. I'm going to remind our audience 365 pairs of shoes was the goal. We help well, you guys help meet and exceed that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Uh, remember that James is the insurance guy. So he was picking up your shoes, but he'll also take care of all your insurance needs, home, auto, commercial, whatever it is you need. Or if you want to add insurance into your business, your tax office, look, tax season's coming around the corner. You only make all your income in the first four months. How would you like additional income for out, throughout the rest of the year? Same thing with your mortgages. You do a transaction and then that customer's gone. How would you like to get paid on that transaction? year after year after year we can help you with that 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com dronequote.net is our show sponsor for today sun is literally sending you out dollar bills you just got to have the equipment dollar, to dollar catch bills, them yeah. that's yeah. solar panels on your rooftops ladies and gentlemen solar pa solar panels are the key to that extra bit of cash which you can then use to pay off your debts pay those school loans that are going to yeah. haunt you for the rest of your life <laughs> or even put it away for a vacation yeah. dronequote.net forward slash business bros is where you start hit them up business bros with one o. with one o. are you ready yep go ahead ask away so what are your th and, and i probably kind of know the answer but what are your thoughts on how podcasting is affecting traditional news because mm. i you, what, so, in terms of the future and stuff yeah like yeah, that, yeah yeah so um the, the the thing about for me for podcasting in in, in general and the internet in general mm -hmm. is there are almost all kinds of opinions and very little fact and and whatever you can find as fact is very biased anyways right. on its own mm -hmm. so um I, I, for me it's always a flood of information sure. mm -hmm. and and any podcast that i listen to i'm going to have a niche thing that i want to listen to and every individual person is going to have their niche things that they want to listen to whether mm -hmm. it's you know cooking or smoking weed right. or skating or fishing or yeah. whatever it is that your little you know your mind revolves around yeah. you're going to get all the opinions on people in that sector and you're going to connect with those people whether mm -hmm. you're 
actually meeting them like a meetup group you're socializing or you're just listening to them on podcasts you're yeah. gaining opinions and to me that's a wealth of information it's like the matrix you right. plug it into the back of your head mm. yeah. you're going to absorb all the information you possibly can yeah. and you're going to guess what come up with your own opinion yeah. on the thing and so i think it's it there's no other way um it, at least in the past, I mean, we talked about this when we were kids. If I wanted to know something when I was a kid, I went to the encyclopedia yeah. or I went to the library, yeah. and that was the limit of my information. Yeah. And that was a wealth of information. Yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. today we have infinite. Yeah. So it's not for me. It's not my job to even decipher what's true or not true. It's let me take it all in, yeah. and you're going to see patterns. You're going to see people consistently doing certain things sure. in your industry, or or practicing certain certain policies, or or certain things get repeated. And whether or not, to me, whether or not it's true, is how it affects your individual life, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's kind of like politics. You can listen to one side all you want, mm -hmm. and, and if you do that, you're building up a wall and not opening up the the communication yeah. or you can just listen to all the channels real quick yeah and and you get to decipher mm -hmm. and then how about this go out and actually talk to somebody mm -hmm. about it and you're going to realize real quick that other people have differing opinions yeah. and other people actually believe what you believe right, right. you just didn't know yeah. that you were wearing a different color sweater yeah. at yeah. that time you know but it's but you still have very similar opinions yeah. so i think podcasting is our ability to niche down in what we want to hear yeah i think podcasting is really the future of 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 information i mean it because people i think are craving conversation mm -hmm. as opposed to the news you know you, you get somebody on the news they give you a, they got 30 seconds to give you an explanation on uh something very complicated whereas in a podcast i can sit down explain myself and i think that's what people want you know and i, I just think you know it's the way with a few more people are listening to podcasts now i think than the news look 10 15 years ago if you were going to be in business mm -hmm. you needed to have a website right Right. That was the thing. If you weren't if you didn't have a website, you weren't in business. Right. Didn't matter how big or small your company was. You needed a website yeah. today. If you're in business or you're doing anything of yeah. merit, you need to have a podcast. Yeah. If you don't have a podcast, then nobody knows who you are. Yeah. And and I mean, that's what it comes down to. Like you're you're sending your information. The beauty of podcasting is it's 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 audio. If you record it with video, now it's video. Mm -hmm. Now it's long-term content. If you listen to the whole episode mm -hmm. or you take snippets and now you have short-term content mm -hmm. and you can repurpose that, all that stuff, you yeah. can turn it into a little hook. Yeah. And now you have, you know, that hook is going to grab somebody's attention. Now you have, uh, are you getting an email out of that? Because, you know, you're attracting more people that are mm -hmm. want to hear your message. And yeah. now you have a database of even like yeah. it's, it's just one of those things that is going to grab your attention. Yeah. We have a six second attention span now yeah. as a human being. Yeah. That's how fast we're scrolling through our stuff. Yeah. So if you can catch somebody's attention in six seconds and you can hold them for a bit longer, you win whatever it is you're trying to guide them in the direction of. Yeah. But you need to attract attention. Podcasts are right. It's yeah. where it's at right now. Yeah. That's awesome. Silence. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm like, I listen to the Marvel News podcast. Like, that's one that but I that's catch. that's your thing. That's yeah, my thing. Yeah, yeah. That's your thing, right? Yeah. And, and, you're gonna, and it's funny because it doesn't really matter what your thing is. Inside your thing, people talk about all the other things. They just talk about it with that. Uh, lens on yeah. mm -hmm. right so even in the marvel universe you're gonna have like political talk yeah. because there's that going on in the marvel universe it's true right and you're just gonna ha you're just you're just bantering about it using that theme mm -hmm. but you're still doing the same type of thing yeah it's i don't know it's my opinion anyways yeah i think podcasting is awesome i think like i said i think it's the wave of the future so you know that's uh, that's one of the main reasons i wanted to be on this show and uh you know i i, I love your guys' format because it just seems like you're just trying to help other people other business owners other uh independent thinkers and um yeah and i'm just a fan of it well we're trying to we're trying to help tell your story so yeah. I, I mean the the audience doesn't really see it but like on the board mm -hmm. those are all story outlines for stuff that's happened in our own life yeah and we we try to tell the story the same type the same method over and over again because that's how you find it interesting like yeah. your story somebody's yeah. gonna click and listen, it's going to click for somebody, right? right. And they're going to see, like, they're going to feel what you were describing when you were going to leave a nine to five secure job and move into, you know, a, a risky space that you don't know is going to be right. like, that is a scary thing. And there are people who are in that position right now, like contemplating, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I have everything I need. Mm -hmm. Why do I want more? Like they're trying to find that justification to, mm -hmm. to fuel what their heart is already telling them to do. Yeah. And if we can offer a story where somebody's like, 
that's why I got to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly that's exactly why I got to do it. You got one life. So you got one life, yeah. but, but they heard your story. Maybe it's your story that inspired that person. Like yeah. one of my favorite quotes was actually a Tupac quote. And he, he says something like, uh, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change the world, but I will inspire the mind of the person who will. Right. Right. And that's how I kind of see it is, is I might not be the one to inspire the, the person who's going to change the world, but maybe one of my guests or one of those pieces of content hit that person at that right time yeah. and boom, yeah. like, you know what I mean? The next person is going to, I don't know, put us on the moon, like on a regular basis. That's yeah. a regular transport. I have no idea. You <laughs> right. know, you never know how, right. how far these ripples expand. Right. So yeah. just get out there and share what you got. Yeah, absolutely. Fernando, thank you for being hey, on the show, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, ladies and gents, make sure you guys head out on, uh, well, what district? 53rd district, yeah, right? 53rd uh, district. Yeah. Yep. Um, you got to give them screen time. Yeah. So I want you to look. I know you can't see your face, but look into this camera right here. Okay. And tell people how to get a hold of you. And by the way, there's contact information below so you can point down to. All right. So you can go to my website at FernandoGarciaForCongress.com. You can also check me out on Facebook at Fernando Garcia for Congress. And um, yeah, check me out. District 53 is San Diego. That's basically central San Diego, La Mesa, college area, North Park, Bonita, Chula Vista. So go to my website, check it out. And uh, don't forget to vote independent March 3rd. Boom. Independent. March 3rd. All the single ladies. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm the karaoke gents. one. Come yeah, on you're, now. You're definitely the karaoke. I'm the karaoke bro. That's all we got for you guys today. Peace. Right. Thank mm, you. Bye-bye. Take care. And we're out. Cool. Bye, Facebook. We love you. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate this. Of course, dude. Yeah. Awesome. There we go. 62%. Okay, cool. You can uh, go ahead and delete the app.